Hey, what's up everybody? Dow Sinesse here from The Mimic Method, and in this video we're going to talk about how to unblur and unblock native speech as we hear it and as we speak it. And what I'm talking about here is if you have the problem in your target language where listening to native speech, it all blurs together despite you knowing the words. So maybe you're watching a film and you understand on subtitles, but when you take the subtitles away, you're completely lost. What's going on there? Or when you're speaking and you want to kind of keep up with the natural speed of all the other natives in conversation, but it's just too fast, you get tongue-tied, tripped up over your own tongue, or maybe your accent is so thick that like people are always kind of like, what? Please, what? Say that again? What? Right? All these problems have to do with the second block in our five-part flow block series, which is the ear mouth block. One of the main blocks we deal with here at the Mimic Method. But before we dive into that, I wanna let you know that on October 15th, we will open registration to take on new students for both our group cohort training, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you wanna go into that deep dive into our system for you to learn both pronunciation and hearing, as well as our new conversation methodology. So if you're interested, I'll have a link in the description. You can click there to find out more information. But let's jump into the topic today. How do we move this ear mouth block so that we can unblur speech and unblock it from our mouth? Well, part of the problem that people have is that in conventional methods, they train focusing on script, on text. So you learn how to read and write, how to spell, or even like in a Chinese language, for example, you focus so much on how to get those new scripting system. And the problem with this is that you're training your attention to focus on the sight of a script and using your fingers to type them or your hands to write them. And this is all well and good because, you know, obviously literacy and reading and writing is a very useful technology and skill to have. But we have to remember that it's a different skill from speaking and listening. And the fundamental skill of language is oral communication. The vast majority of human beings did not know how to read and write until like, not even like this past century, to be honest. So really when we're talking about language, we're really talking about what I'm doing with you right now, which is making sounds with my mouth that you are hearing with your ears. This is what language learning is all about. So I wanna go into our program and show you how to train that. And the idea here is that the reason why people rely so much on script is because they can see it and they can clearly organize it in their mind and it feels safe. We all got trained how to read and write when we're very young and therefore feel comfortable with it. Um, and it's okay to use visual aid, but you need to understand that when you use script, you're bringing your attention away from where it needs to be, which is on the sounds and movements of a live interaction rather than on this very abstract symbolic system that doesn't really perfectly capture the reality and complexity of oral speech, okay? In fact, in my many years of coaching people, I've come to appreciate that the biggest source of people's mispronunciation and mishearing of things is that they see the word spelled out in their head and they're unconsciously applying their native language reading patterns to it. To give a simple example, I often hear people learning French say the word set, which is the word for seven, they'll say sept, or even if they don't say it, their lips will touch. Sept. Like, why are your lips touching? There's no, there's no lip touching in set. Ah, because when you spell set in French, there's a P there for whatever reason, right? So people see the P and they can't unsee it. Better example is my name, Idausa, right? Idausa. It happens to be spelled with the letter H, I-D-A-H-O-S-A. -S so when people see that, they always say Idaho. I always make a point when I meet people. I say Idausa. Like, oh, how do you spell it? Don't worry about it. Just say e dao sa. And it's not until I trust that they have that sound embedded in their mind that I expose them to the writing because it's so powerful that even if they know how to pronounce it, the word will show up in their head and they can't help but say Idaho sa, Idaho sa. And I'm sure a lot of you watching here are like, oh wait, it's not Idaho sa? Don't worry about it. It's the story of my life, so don't, uh, I don't take it, to, take it to heart. So let's dive into the program. How do you then train your capacity to hear and pronounce sounds? Well, I do believe in using visual aid, but not of scripts. I wanna use visual aids for real physical reality. So you see here in our program, we go through each relevant body part, like your lips, your tongue, and your throat. And then I, I kind of show you 
what's happening on the inside using a series of MRI scans and a 3D anatomy app showing you and talking you through things and um, different charts and graphs that show you where things are, showing you how your tongue is set up. And I'm not just talking about it. There's all these drills we do where you're combining this visual information with specific um, movements and sounds you're trying to create. And there's a lot of self-exploration, but I kind of guide you through that with the materials. And you'll be surprised at how quickly you can become consciously and visually aware of this space, of the moving parts in this space that are involved in the speech you do every single day. Because you learned it as a child, and because, because most of the activity happens behind closed lips, you are just completely unconscious of what's happening there. But if you set a flashlight in there, if you look at our charts and graphs and anatomy apps and MRI scans, and you do our drills, then you can very quickly develop an awareness and control over this whole, what I call, speech instrument. If you think about language as a music you're playing, and then you're, this is your speech instrument. So if you want to learn how to play a new song, you first need to learn how to control your instrument, right? That should be lesson one. And in fact, it is one of our first lessons in the program, which is completely neglected by every other language learning program. So let's let that sit in for a second. Your job as a language learner is to learn how to use your mouth to make sounds that other people understand, yet you have no idea what your mouth is doing. Instead, you look at a bunch of abstract letters and hope for the best. And of course, it doesn't happen. So just, I'm not making stuff up, guys. Just, I'm just operating off of first principles and what just makes logical sense. So hopefully you see that logical sense. So we do it with our mouth. We also go into our throat, different things here, especially if you're learning French for nasal oral articulation. You know, a lot of times people see this, they're kind of like, oh, is this like complex academic phonetics? It's not, it's just your body. If you, you want to know your body. Um, I try to make things as simple as possible and systematically build your knowledge one step at a time. I've been adapting this and iterating on it for many years now, so um, with feedback through students, so it gets better and better each time. And yeah, and you just learn these things the way you would learn, you know, a musical instrument or any other kind of motor skill. It just takes a little bit of practice and again, being able to visualize what's actually occurring inside of your mouth. Great. So you do that for your mouth, your throat. You also develop like a tactile sensitivity. You know, the different consonant sounds in any language are formed usually around the, by putting one articulator in contact with another. So you can become much more precisely aware of the different touch points on your tongue and on your palate, and then learn how to appreciate a sound as that. So for example, the English t, d sounds, like to do in English, articulated by pressing this point, number one on my tongue, against A. T -d -t -d. So again, you can probably mimic that sound, t -d, but you probably never thought about where it's being made. And then if you're learning Spanish though, or Portuguese or French, they will articulate using point number two, t -t 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 -d, which makes a softer sound. So you're, you would hear that, people would, oh, you sound different, I don't know why. Your teacher might be like, yeah, you know, I just gotta make it softer, I don't, I don't know, but people don't know what's going on, but I, you know, I figured out what's happening and how to teach it to people, and that's why I put it into this program. So you, once again, you develop that tactile sensitivity, and it just, everything becomes much more clear and precise in your mind, in your mouth, um, and that allows you to unblock your mouth at the fundamental level by actually demanding and commanding the instrument. Then with that command, you now go into your target language and we cover all the different sounds in your language. Every language has a finite inventory of sounds or what they call phonemes. Each phoneme has a specific way of moving your speech instrument to produce that. Most of the phonemes you can already do. The ones you can't do involve parts that you've used in other sounds. And once you understand the big picture, you can start to figure out how to pronounce these new sounds. So I go through with you every single sound and then do different drills to help you um, correct common pronunciation errors. So for example, here you do the drill of tongue and lip stilling. What's that about? Well, when English speakers pronounce the Spanish vowels e, o, and u, they tend to move their tongues and lips during the articulation. A, o, u, but in Spanish, your tongue and lips are completely still during the articulation. E, 
o u a o u e o u notice that that sounds more spanish when i do it that way so again a lot of times you feel yeah it sounds more spanish but why now you know exactly and precisely why and you have drills to help you practice that so it becomes muscle memory it becomes automatic intuition for you moving on it's the same deal for consonants we organize all the different unfamiliar consonants because most are already familiar to you into different categories based on the physicality of how they're articulated and you just do different drills and I explain what's happening and why we group it that way and what that group is about then you see a native speaker articulating the sound I uh, yeah slow motion so you can mimic it I uh, yeah right and then you can listen to words that have yeah words in it yeah bella bella allí allí right and once again just one by one you go through and just learn how to articulate every single sound in isolation but speech isn't a bunch of isolated phonemes they come together to form syllables which form words which form sentences right so we need to actually practice them grouped together in these ways so you learn a skill called chunking where you're able to take a word or take a short phrase and then chunk it down into its respective parts so it sounds something like this amor a mor sonrisa son ri sa all right so what we're doing here is we're building a kind of mental scaffolding in your head to be able to dissect the speech and the words that come your way into its component pieces and we're making good use of our hands uh, we have a procedure we use with our hands because our mental our capacity to kind of precisely think mentally kind of stems out of our capacity to more precisely move our joints and hands and fingers that's why when people speak they use their hands a lot especially someone like me i'm very intentional with my hands when i speak as a teacher because i know from the science that these little gestures will more deeply implant concepts into people's minds so we're using that idea to help people build this precision awareness of how speech shows up and breaks down um, you have syllables those syllables break down into phonemes so all those phonemes you learned in these lessons you now see them applied here here again words hormiga or mi ga or o r mi m i ga g a or mi ga hormiga all right so when you first do this a lot of people have this kind of like it's like kind of difficult but when you get over the hump and you learn the skill it just kind of allows you to see the matrix of your target language and how all these lego pieces fit together to make speech and this gets back to what i was saying this is how you unblur the speech now it's not blah, 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 blah. now it's like oh i recognize every sound i see how each piece fits together in the grand scheme of things which allows me to more effectively mimic as well as pronounce things correctly and find out where my pronunciation errors are and then drill them effectively so that they're no longer errors and i can do them easily this is the whole system. I'm giving you a whole package here. I'm teaching you how to fish as well as giving you a whole smorgasbord of all the fish and nutrients you need in your diet. That is what we're all about here. Putting it all together into the end, um you obviously have complete phrases that kind of flow together and we have song lyrics here which is the most fun way to practice this. We also have normal speech as well to practice with, but we have songs so you can get that good repetition in and you can take phrases like Shakira song here slow down and looped over and over again for you to do our practice with it that's the and but to build up to that we have the materials like we just described everything segmented the la manzaner so it's another kind of special way that we break down speech into something we call pressure linking 
where you make account for air pressure. I won't go into the details here, but it's a game changer for pronunciation training. You'll also see we have our own kind of proprietary way of transcribing things. You'll learn our symbol system and transcription system. And so here he is, the scripts come into play, but these are the good scripts because we need to account for sounds that aren't clearly captured in the normal alphabet, as well as how they flow and blend together, which is what all these other symbols are about. Don't worry about them for now. Just know that the reason they're there is because they help you precisely, accurately, and completely grasp and understand the full totality of articulation in your target language. And when you do that and you drill it and you attune your ear to it, speech stops being fast and blurry and then a stem subjectively feels slow and spaced out and clear. So now you can understand things, you can interpret things, you can pick up new words and expressions more intuitively. Then you can also automatically just kind of learn and imprint and mimic and imitate things and flow out of your mouth. And then when you get stuck and blocked, you can pinpoint what exactly is blocking you, which sound, which combination of sounds, which combination of sounds with the air pressure, what's really blocking you? Okay, is that. Now use this drill we worked out for you to get it. Like a piano player, just do your drills over and over again. And if you put in the work, then that combination will be easy to you for the rest of your life. And not only that, that combination shows up in a thousand different places in the language. So the whole language becomes more flowy, more fluent, all right? So hopefully with this quick kind of run through the whole progression of how we remove your ear block, your mouth block, you, you understand a bit more about what we're doing in our program. We do this in a group set, group coaching setting, and we do it in a one-on-one -on -one coaching setting, which is the best way to really drill down and figure out what's blocking you. And when students do this, even people who've been learning for many years and just always struggle to really comprehend, all of a sudden, things are flowing in their ears, or they really struggle with their accent, really struggle to speak smooth and fluently, all of a sudden the words are flowing out of their mouth, in whatever language it is, because it's a universal technique. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I can get back to you. And if you're interested in potentially joining us for the next cohort of group training and one-on-one -on -one coaching, click the link in the description and let us know and we will be in touch with you October 15th. We open up registration, and then October 20th, we start flowing with the training, all right? Thank you for watching, everybody. Talk to you on our next video, flow block number three, where we'll talk about the ego spirit block. Ooh.